There's been plenty of talk about it, but what will it actually take to make America green? The reality is bringing renewable energy to all parts of the country will require some sacrifices. Bo Evans has what that transition could look like. Hey everyone, I'm Bo Evans, and I don't know what you think about when you think about the future of green energy in this country, but I'm not sure I thought about being in rural Georgia for it. But that's exactly where I am because communities like this one are trying to step up and figure out their place in a green America. I love to solve problems. And I think the energy industry and the transition that we're gonna to have to make over the next 20 to 30 to 50 years uh, is a huge problem to solve. And I wanna really be a part of that problem solving. Ryan Peters is an engineer with Soul America Energy and hopes one of the solutions to creating more clean energy for the country is just slightly off a road through some rolling green hills in Putnam County, Georgia. It's a solar farm. Typical rule of thumb is that one megawatt is about 200 to 250 homes that it can provide power for. So this project again is almost three megawatts. So you're looking at 600 to uh, you know, 800 homes that uh, this project is providing power for. 800 homes might not sound like a lot, but it's around 8% of the occupied homes in Putnam County. It's something county officials are very proud of. Our main goal is making sure that our ordinance and our codes are user friendly so those who are wishing or looking to implement solar will have an easy and smooth process. Lisa Jackson is the director of planning for Putnam County. She says the county started creating ordinances and regulations for clean power a few years ago because they knew they would have to adjust. Advocates hope Putnam County isn't the only one looking ahead. Rural communities um, will certainly be seeing this development. And I think what's important you know, for them is kind of preparing in advance. Heidi Kolbeck Erlacher is a policy expert with the Center for Rural Affairs. She says to meet the Biden administration's goal of a carbon-free electricity sector by 2035, much of the slack will have to be picked up by rural communities. Something that there's been a lot of focus on is building out transmission to handle the increased capacity coming with these new clean energy projects. The solar farm in Putnam doesn't produce enough electricity to require too much transmission infrastructure, but other areas that take on bigger projects will have to think about how to get the electricity from point A to point B. But this transition to clean power could come with big opportunities for these communities as well. You have land lease payments. You also have you know, job creation for the infrastructure build out. And then it brings in very significant tax revenue to these communities. So this can bring in literally millions of dollars annually which is just icing on the cake for creating a cleaner world. That's the ultimate goal, to, to make us a um, more green community, more healthy community. For The Race, I'm Bo Evans reporting. As America moves toward renewable sources of energy, what happens to towns that once thrived on other sources like oil or coal? Vanessa Mashanya takes us to a place going through an energy transition. Valmy plant is the last coal-fired plant in the state of Nevada and it's been on the blocks for probably 10 years to be decommissioned. Through the black smoke, Jan Morrison tells me she can see the potential buried in this relic of fossil fuel past. So you're not talking about taking an infrastructure and basically turning it into a rusty facility. It, it's gonna be vibrant and it's gonna be a vital part of our energy grid. This is the Valmy Coal Plant in Humboldt County where Morrison is the economic development officer. She says the plant will be turning into a solar farm. What makes it desirable for that is location, location, location. It is miles and miles and miles of desert. It's a perfect opportunity to de develop solar fields. According to Brookings, a lot of existing fossil fuel infrastructure like the Valmy plant happens to be where the strongest potential for renewable energy generation lies. Another plus of transitioning existing infrastructure to renewables, the connections are already there. It has the infrastructure on the Western grid. I mean, it is, it is amazing 
major, major hub. When you look at all the investment into that, why would you let that go? According to the Environmental and Energy Study Institute, in 2019, the nation saw the second highest number of coal plant closures. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics say coal mining employment has dropped by more than half since 2012. Switching existing infrastructure to renewables can help save jobs, but for many communities, the switch is not easy as cost is a major factor. The billions of dollars in the infrastructure bill should bring more incentives for these transitions, hopefully allowing a majority of the 1.7 million people who work in fossil fuels to keep their jobs. People don't realize in a rural area how renewable energy friendly we already are. As for Morrison, she's excited that her community gets to be on the front lines of the transition to a greener future. The concept of renewable energy is very welcome out here. And then you step into the larger picture and everybody, of course, gets it. I'm Vanessa Mishanya. As the demand for batteries grows, so does the demand for a metal that right now is scarce. Next. We'll take you to the one place in America where people are finding lithium in the ground.